we will proceed in primitive calculus and in the in in the calculation of a derivative of sin x not through the first principle okay so that is the con okay so that is the concept so can we find the derivative of sin x so this is what we are trying to trying to find out what we have done till now so that is a question so what is our uh, progress report that what we have done till now so what we have achieved till now is that area is calculation of the area is one of the way to to calculate the net collection or to calculate the addition from rate of collection so calculating the area means width into height if height is variable with the width then it comes under algebra and it comes under algebraic equation if that is the case then area of any shape is width that is the x axis and height that is function over x so fx into x is the area of any shape so any abstract shape so fx is function over x so fx can be x sin x cos x x to the power pi whatever it is so it can be like this if this is x axis then fx it may not be a flat line it will be like this if it is a flat line then there is a there is a constant height so height into width will be the area that is nothing but the net collection so that we have seen so if person is walking at 2 km per hour so it is a flat line where height is 2 km and where the x axis hour so if he is walking for 5 hour then 2 into 5 10 km he is walk so net collection rate is 2 km per hour net collection is height into width if height is not the 2 km per hour it is x or x square <laughs> sin height is x square in the sense that when he starts when when the x axis is zero his velocity his speed is zero but when time is 2 hour at that moment he that moment his speed is 4 km per hour when time is time is 6 hour then his speed is 36 km per hour so he is not walking he is driving some bike so that is the speed so at the end of 8 hour how many kilometer he has collected so per kilo, per hour he is collecting x square where x is the time if that is the case what how much he has collected that is the area area is nothing but fx into x fx is x square so x square into x x to the power 3 but that is not the case because x to the x square will have this kind of curve if this is x axis then x square curve will be like this like this and like this if this is x axis i cannot multiply x square with the x so there calculus come so numeric numeric multiplication that is the area that is rectangle then algebraic multiplication and then integral calculus so algebraic multiplication is fx into dx fx is x square x square into x x axis that is the x cube so x cube should be the area but it is not the area earlier 2 km per hour 2 km into x 2 into x that is the area true rectangle area is height is 2 and width is x 2 into x simple multiplication then algebraic multiplication 2 km per hour 2 km per hour means 2 into x to the power 0 into x same 2x now if it is x square then the area net i have to calculate area one that is the concept so if it is x axis is like this and x square is like this so what is the area underneath the area underneath is x to the power 3 by 3 that we have calculated please watch the previous video so the area underneath is x to the power 3 by 3 so x square dx that is the area under the x square is x to the power 3 by 3 there is no magic here it is pre calculated so integration of x to the power n is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 so x to the power 3 divided by 3 so 
so if that is the case then the integration of x square so this is how we proceeded then we saw that few things then we saw that one thing is sitting on top of other thing so if this is top layer then top layer is sitting on top of lower layer then top like if i have integral calculus then it is sitting on algebra algebra is sitting on numeric sign like that in in integral calculus everything is sitting on top of polynomial so if i have x to the power n then x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 now we are going even top and trying to calculate the integration of sin x i don't know how to calculate the area of sin x curve i don't know so other way is can i break sin x into polynomial equation because i know for the polynomial if i break up then quickly i can calculate the integration of sin x if i quickly i can calculate the integration of sin x uh, through breaking into polynomial if i quickly i can break sin x into polynomial set of polynomial polynomial integration we know then quickly then quickly i can find the integration so fx integration gx so integration of sin x is gx if fx is sin x integration of sin x is gx okay but i don't know integration of sin x because sin x curve is so it is so intricate that i cannot calculate the area not possible i cannot break the sin x into polynomial also so that i can calculate the area not possible then integration of fx that is sin x is gx that i don't know but we so that anti integral that is derivative if i find any function gx whose derivative with fx then integration of fx is gx what is the function for which derivative is sin x i don't know let's consider let's try derivating sin x so sin x derivation is if f, if fx integration is sin x that is fx into x or fx into dx then if it is gx fx into dx is gx fx dx is gx then this is multiplication then derivative is division the gx by x or d gx by dx is derivation back to fx so what is fx for which the derivation is sin x so leave this fundamental what is the derivative of sin x if gx is sin x what is derivative so who knows derivative of sin x would be sin x or i don't know so let's try so what is derivative of sin x so if i try to find gx by x or d gx by dx consider that gx is x square this is what we are giving the example so x square in by x it is coming as algebraic equation x if x gx by x is algebraic equation then the division will not work algebraic division will also not work division numeric division algebraic division now we have to go with calculus differentiation calculus differentiation means if i draw if fx is collection rate then gx is net collection if i draw the graph of net collection at every moment x the rate of collection that we calculate is different means d gx by dx based upon the x value at what moment of x it will be different so it will be again be a algebraic equation so people saw that to try to calculate the d gx by gx is nothing but gx plus delta x minus gx divided by delta x so many times many times we have calculated this so if this is x axis and this is x square that is the net collection then at any moment x what is gx x plus delta x what is gx if i subtract this g delta x minus gx that 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 i get the height the subtraction height difference height difference at point x that is gx plus delta x minus gx divided by delta x this way i'll get that at any point x if i make one unit of change how many unit of change in the vertical that i will see that is d gx by dx at any point x at any point x equal to alpha means d g x by d x substitute x with the alpha then at any point alpha so at any every point d g x by d x is different so let's say for the x so it will come as algebraic equation when you keep changing the x you will get the differentiation at different 
values so that is the idea the now the with the first principle it is f g x plus delta x minus g x divided by delta x or g x plus delta x minus g x minus delta x g x plus delta x minus g x minus delta x divided by 2 delta x if that is the case then we can calculate the differentiation with first principle so sin x if i go then it becomes sin x delta x sin x cos delta x plus sin delta x cos delta cos x minus sin x cos delta x plus minus minus plus sin delta x cos x divided by 2 delta x then it will come as cos x sin delta x by delta x then since delta x delta x tends to 0 then sin delta x by delta x they are not 0 they are non non zero number but so they will divide as 1 so it is cos x so this is what we oppose so cos x if differentiation of sin x equal to cos x sin delta x by delta x where delta x tends to 0 then sin delta x and delta x will be same but not 0 so we can divide it and then it will be 1 so differentiation of sine wave will be cos x now we ca we came to rescue we came to our rescue from science called trigonometry so in trigonometry science we followed the polar coordinate system so that was the preview so in polar coordinate system this is polar coordinate system if this is polar coordinate system if this is polar coordinate system then then this is radius if this is radius and this is centered at the origin this polar coordinate system the circle polar coordinate system is centered at the origin if it is centered at the origin then this radius i can rotate along the circumference when other end is fixed at the origin so this is the idea so now angle is zero now when i am rot when i am rotating angle is growing now angle is pi by 2 angle is pi angle is 3 pi by 2 and then angle is 2 pi 0 so at any angle theta at if this is 0 degree then at any angle theta what is sin theta okay so at any angle theta then if i go like this that at any angle theta theta the sin theta is height by height by this radius if radius is a then height is y then y by a if can you see if i keep rotating it then this this red this hypotenuse at any theta if theta is theta 1 then height is small but hypotenuse is is radius if theta is more height is growing but hypotenuse remains the same what is decreasing is the x so now x is radius a but as we go in the theta growing height is growing but this this x is decreasing now x is 0 and height is full radius a so cos 90 is 0 cos 0 is the hypotenuse radius a as we grow then theta is growing and x is decreasing and height is increasing so what is at any point theta what is d sin theta by d theta that is in the question so at any any theta at any point at any point theta if i increase one degree then how much sin theta would change the value of sin theta if theta is 45 degree there if i make one unit of change not one angle if i make one unit of change then how many unit of change will be seen in the value of sin theta if theta is 0 degree then if i make one unit of change then how many unit of change that will be seen in the value of sin theta that is d sin theta by d theta it should come in a kind of algebraic equation so that if i keep changing the theta then the d sin theta by d theta will keep changing then we found that sin theta is nothing but y by hypotenuse that is square root of x square plus y square so where x square plus y square square root 
that is nothing but radius a and it is fixed it is not changing if i keep changing the theta if i keep changing the theta still this hypotenuse is same it is not changing it is constant this is our proof it is not there in any of the book or internet so d sin theta by d theta equal to d of y by square root of x square plus y square by d theta so square root of x square plus y square is radius a which is constant i can take it out so 1 by a dy by d theta d y by d theta or if i say first in differentiate with a y with a chain rule then dy by dy into dy by d theta so 1 into dy by d theta same okay so or so we can say that it is d sin theta by d theta is nothing but 1 by a dy by d theta or it started with y by a if i differentiate y by a now the d theta then it will be dy by d theta straight forward if i go with the chain rule also dy by dy dot dy by d theta 1 so it is at the end 1 by a radius into dy by d theta what is required now if sin x derivative has to be cos x then dy by d theta has to be x then it is x by radius a that is nothing but cos theta that is required but but it is true dy by d theta dy by d theta is nothing but x1 so variation in y variation in y y if i increment one degree here how much y would vary consider this is a y if i increment one one is very big if i increment one unit then how much y change here if i keep and if i increment one then how much y change so everywhere y will be dy by d theta i am saying it is x if it is x if it is x then when x is big then dy by d theta is higher so at this position the increment rate is higher when x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller then dy by d theta is also becoming smaller and smaller and smaller so anyway we have described it in the last tutorial so now last video so now we are trying to find out so consider that any moment this is theta at any moment this is theta if this is theta then this is y then i make d theta change d theta is very big it should be very small so this is theta if this is theta then this is y if this is y then this is x if this is x and this is y then this is y this is x and this is square root of x square plus y square that is radius a if i make d theta change then y was here y became like this there is a change in y consider this change is delta y this is y earlier and this is now y so earlier it was here so this is the y now it became it i make delta theta so earlier this angle was theta this angle was theta now the angle is theta plus d theta theta plus d theta earlier the y was here now y is here earlier x was here now x is small so these are the changes we have seen so earlier the earlier the y was here at that moment let's draw a straight line <coughs> so when y was at the earlier position when it was theta angle when it was theta angle then it is a y then from here draw a straight line and now when there is a d theta change now from here draw a horizontal line horizontal line from here a straight line it will meet at a point and from there so this position is p this position is q this position is o o p q there is an arc can you see if this is p if this is p position then if i rotate d theta then it is q position from q to p there is an arc from p there is a vertical line and from q there is a horizontal line so if that is the case then horizontal line and vertical line they cut like this 
so this position let's say r this position is p this position is q if that is the case then then there is a arc like this this is th d theta arc okay so this is d theta arc this point is p this point is q and this point is r so this is, it becomes like this okay so it becomes like this okay so it becomes like this so this point this point is r this point is p and this point is q it is like this the arc what we are seeing the angle behind behind the arc is d theta so what is the length of the arc if radius is a the length of the arc is a d theta okay now now I'll do approximation, but it will be straightforward and it is logical. Now, if I have a circle, if I have a circle like this, if I have a circle like this, then at any moment, if I draw it, any moment, any point, if I draw a tangent, any point, any point, if this is x axis, this is y axis, then any point P okay at any point p if this is the radius if i draw perpendicular to the radius then it will become tangent at this point 90 degree okay so at any point if i draw tangent at any point if i draw tangent then that tangent is nothing but it is perpendicular to the radius everywhere if it is radius and if at that point if i draw tangent and this point or just i keep i keep it then this will be perpendicular to the radius this is inherent property of circle if you have a circle at any point if you draw a tangent at that point then the tangent will be perpendicular to the, to the radial vector or if i derive radial vector if i derive radial vector then it will become tangent okay so if that is the case then earlier we had we had this as as kind of this is theta degree this is rotating can you see this is rotating at one point it is at theta degree now i incremented d theta so where it is theta where it is theta and i incremented d theta then between these two points it makes an arc this is what we have seen if it makes an arc then then i can draw a triangle kind of scenario if it is a triangle kind of scenario and this arc is angle is d theta the length of this arc from this point that is p and this is q the length of this arc is a if radius is a d theta can we connect these two lines problem is solved so if 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 okay so what is this arc is again i'll show so this arc is nothing but if i have a circle and circle has this as a circle has this as radius this as the kind of zero degree and radius is rotating like this then when it is at angle theta when it is at angle theta and making d theta move then can you see when this is point p then if it is there is angle theta moment this is q from q to p there is an arc the angle between these two point is d theta this arc is very small d theta is so small that now now it is now if i draw it again if i draw it again then if i draw it again if i draw it again if i draw it again then this arc if it is very small i consider this as a straight line now you'll say there is an approximation again there is no approximation we will talk about it. 
So if this is a straight line, then this forms a triangle. If this forms a triangle, then this is 90 degree. It is seen now because they cut each other at 90 degree. So this angle, this angle is 90 degree. Okay. What about this angle and this angle? There are three. If this is a triangle, if this arc is very small, if I connect these two points, okay. This point is P, this point is Q. Q and P I connect by a straight line. P and Q I can connect by a straight line. That a straight line will be equal to the arc because arc is very small. We will prove it. So consider that straight line is same as the length of the arc. This proves that the that line what we are seeing. So if this is a triangle, if this is a triangle, then this has this is as one side, this is another side, and this arc is another side. Arc is a straight line. This is what we are saying. If this theta is very small, the length of that straight line is a d theta. The length of the straight line is a d theta. If length length of the straight line is a d theta, and then this angle is 90 degrees. What about this angle and this angle? That is in question. Okay. <sighs> okay, at least we have found this much. Now no, go, no, go back and let's see it again. Now if this is if this is theta, okay, if this angle is theta. If this angle is theta, then from here we drew a straight line, and then with it is theta plus d theta, then we drew your horizontal line, and it is cut each other. When it is at this position, then p position, then this angle is theta. This angle is theta. If I draw a straight line from here, then there are can you see there are three angles. If I draw a straight line here. One angle is this angle. One angle is this angle. Okay. One angle is this angle. One, if I, if there are at point P, the, I have drawn a vertical line. If there is a vertical line, then there is a another line which forms a triangle that is the arc one. Okay. There is another line like this. This line. And this line are perpendicular to the each other because it's tangent there. Okay, so now can you see this? If this is P and this is angle theta, so right now it is making angle theta. If angle theta, if this is the arc, then the line we are talking about arc, that line is perpendicular here because that is tangent, perpendicular to the radius. So if this is perpendicular line, then there are there are three angles. One angle is this angle, another angle is this angle, and third angle is this angle. If I add these three, it becomes 180 degree. 180 degree means 180 degree means this angle that I am trying to find out. This is 90 degree, and this is this angle. Let's see this triangle. There is another triangle where there is this angle, this angle, and one is 90 degree. Actually, I'm tired. Tired. Okay, so we'll try again. Okay, so okay, so if this is theta angle, if this is theta angle. If I draw, if I draw a straight line, here is a straight line, then it makes a triangle here. If this is a theta angle, if this is, oops, if this is theta angle, if I draw a straight line, then it forms a small triangle here. That a straight line goes up, and then I make a d theta movement. From here, I draw a horizontal line, horizontal line, and this is straight line. Cut each other at 90 degree and it makes upper triangle that we have seen. Now in this lower triangle, in this lower triangle, there are three angles. One is this perpendicular, 
90 degree one is this theta angle one is this angle now this angle belongs to if there is a straight line then this angle this angle this angle that is 90 degree tangent and this angle again make 180 degree if that is the case this angle is common this is 90 degree that is this 90 this proves that this angle and this angle are same that is theta make sense so if i go up then we have we have something like this that we talked if we go up then there is there there is there is a point r this is point p and this is this is point q this is like this so the circle arc this is circle arc this is point p p and this is point q the angle behind this arc is d theta so if i go about this triangle then this triangle then we are connecting p and q as a straight line this straight line is same as the arc if it is very small this is what we are saying if that is the case then length of this line is a d theta this straight line this straight line this is 90 degree then we are saying this angle if this is a triangle if this is a triangle then it has three angles one is one is 90 degree one is theta this we have found this is another angle that i don't care so if that is the case if this angle is theta if this angle is theta and this is a straight line and this is 90 degree then cos theta can we see the cos theta is this height by this hypotenuse so height is delta y height is if there is a d theta change then height is delta y change so height is cos theta that is base y hypotenuse is nothing but delta y base is delta y delta y by hypotenuse that is a d theta so cos theta equal to y by a d cos theta equal to delta y by a d delta a delta theta delta y by delta theta so delta y by delta theta equal to a cos theta graspable i'll try again so if this is a circle if this is the circle if this is the circle then i have at the beginning i have a radius if this is the circle at the beginning at the beginning this is the base and this is the radius so at one point there is a angle theta there is an angle there is an angle theta at this theta there is a height called y there is a height called y this point is p there is a height called y okay this angle is theta this is y if i make delta theta movement then now this angle is theta plus delta theta if this position was p earlier new position on the circle is q this is q this is p if this is p and this is q then from p i draw a straight line from q i draw a horizontal line if they cut each other and then they form a kind of a triangle if this is the earlier if this point is p from p if i draw a straight line it cut this horizontal line at a point from here 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 there is a triangle again so there is a above one triangle down one triangle if there is a straight line here in the along the straight line there are three angles okay if there is a straight line if there is a straight line here then there are three angles can you see one angle is one angle is this angle one angle is this angle and one angle is this angle all if i if there is a straight line like this then there are three angles one angle is this this and this so all three angle if we add it becomes 180 degree okay so if there is a triangle if there is a triangle if there is a triangle like this if there is a triangle like this then at this is the point p 
if this is the point P, then if I draw a straight line, this is the point P, if I draw a straight line, then, then there is a triangle here. And if I, it goes up, and if I move by delta theta here, I draw a horizontal line, then it make a triangle here also. One triangle here, and one triangle here. This triangle, this is perpendicular, and this, there is one angle here, and this angle is theta. Now, if I draw a straight line, straight line, then there are three angles here, that is 180 degree. One angle is this, another angle is this, and then another angle is this. This angle we are saying it is same as theta. This is what we are saying. Because if it is 180 degree, full is 180 degree, this angle is common. This angle is 90 degree because it is tangent at that point. So this will make a 90 degree. If that is, if this angle is 90 degree, this angle is common between this triangle and this 180 degree. Then this angle with the vertical, this angle is theta. Straightforward. So if that angle is theta, then the upper layer, upper triangle, what we are talking about, upper triangle is like this. Upper triangle is like this. Upper triangle is like this, where this is P, this is Q. If that is the case, then this is the arc. This R belongs to angle D theta. The length of the arc is A D theta. If I consider, if, if this is P and this is Q, if I draw a straight line, then this becomes a triangle, where this angle, where the, this angle is theta. This is what we proved. If this angle is theta, then cos of theta is base by hypotenuse. So hypotenuse, if d, d theta is very small, then the arc what we are saying, that is A d theta, is same as the line. If this is same as the line, then hypotenuse is A d theta. If hypotenuse is A d theta, and this height of the upper triangle is delta y. If I make delta theta change, then there is a delta y change in the y. So cos theta is delta y divided by A delta theta. So cos theta equal to delta y by A delta theta. So delta y by delta theta equal to A cos theta or dy by d theta equal to A cos theta. So earlier we had d sin theta by d theta equal to 1 by A into dy by d theta. It will transform into A cos theta. A and A would cut down and it become cos theta. So differentiation of sin theta is a cos a is cos theta. To trigonometry we can prove it. Now it comes as can we take the delta a d theta which is an arc as a straight line saying that since the d theta is very small when d theta is very small I can consider arc as same as the straight line. No problem. Actually that is not the case. The case is that algebra never works in d theta. Algebra never works in d theta. Algebra works in a fixed way. Okay, there is no first principle or whatever it is. So at any point, if this is the radius of the circle, at every, if radius is rotating, if radius is rotating, every moment, every moment, if I draw tangent, then it is perpendicular to the radius. This is what we want there, that the line what we are drawing, it is perpendicular at that point. So the arc we are saying, so actually the algebraic, we are following algebraic calculus, not the first principle. So in algebraic calculus, there is no delta theta. So every moment, if we are calculating d sine theta by d theta, then what is the differentiation of sine theta at point theta, not if I move delta theta. Delta theta I move to show it, but algebra does not work in delta theta. Algebra work straight forward that you keep changing the value of theta and the value will keep changing. That's it. So if, if I have a circle, if I have a circle, if I have a circle and at that moment radius is at theta, 
angle theta and this is the point P. At this point, if I draw a tangent, tangent, then it will be exactly perpendicular to the radius at that moment. Okay. If the tangent is exactly perpendicular to the radius, then it solves our issue. Then we don't need kind of considering that let's consider delta x is an delta a, a, d, a d theta is an arc and consider arc is a, a straight line. That much is not required. It works without that also because the kind of the delta theta we are thinking that is not required in calculus algebra, algebraic calculus. Every moment, what is the value of theta based upon the theta, things would change. There is no delta theta. So every moment, every theta, if I take the tangent, d sine theta by d theta, the tangent, then the tangent, the tangent will be perpendicular to the to the radius so that when the tangent is perpendicular that is the actual base of considering that this is a straight line if i make a straight line then arc so arc if i say arc if i say arc arc and radius arc and radius are perpendicular always even though arc is looking rotating but at that moment where radius is touching, this is what I wanted to say. The moment, the point, the point, the point has no width and height. The point where radius is touching the arc, at that moment, arc is perpendicular to the radius. This is what the actual algebra is. So whatever the assumption we have made that arc is there and I consider a straight line that will be perpendicular if it is a, if I consider arc as a straight line then it should be perpendicular to the radius it is anyway there so arc arc of a circle every moment if I rotate the radius then arc and radius they are perpendicular to each other always that's why it is polar coordinate system polar any coordinate system if I take different coordinates, they should be orthogonal to each other. That's why it is coordinate system. Like in Cartesian coordinate system, X, Y, and Z, all three are orthogonal to each other at 90 degrees. If I take polar coordinate system, then there are two things. One is radius and another is arc. Arc is driven by angle theta, where radius is driven by radius. So two independent component actually is not theta and radius. Actually two independent component is R D R theta and R. Where R theta is an arc and R is the radius. Radius and arc every moment they are perpendicular to each other. Even though arc looks, arc looks uh, curve, circular curve and radius look a straight line but still. The point radius touches the arc at that moment, the arc and radius are perpendicular to each other. We will prove it. I am not showing that this is hypothesis. We will prove it that any moment the arc is perpendicular to the radius. If arc is perpendicular to the radius, then I don't have to consider delta theta. If I stay, then there will be arc. And if I consider arc as perpendicular, a straight line then it will perpendicular to the not required so arc is always perpendicular to the radius if that is the case then delta theta and a straight line that is also not required i can straight forward i can say this is radius and i take a tangent and then there is a triangle above the triangle and equal immediately you can say that cos theta equal to delta y by a delta theta so that is not an assumption that is inherent property of a circle. We will proceed on it. We will proceed on, on it for calculation of the gradient vector. What is gradient vector when we have the algebraic equation of a circle as algebra, I mean the equation of this line as an algebra and equation of the line as a vector. In both sense, what is gradient vector? There we will see that how radius and arc are perpendicular to each other every point. If that is the case, then the imagination what we have done that arc 
is straight line and both have same length when delta theta is very small because that is any way inherent there. So, d sin theta by d theta equal to cos theta that is natural. We will proceed on it. 